Hi there, welcome to the channel. I hope you, that you're already familiar with Cadastral and Continue extension, and probably already have installed Continue in your Visual Studio Code. Cadastral is a new code model from Mistral. The purpose of Cadastral model is to increase your programming productivity using code completion and Q&A, so you can ask questions within IDE. Um, this is Continue, it's a, an extension for Visual Studio Code. It is an alternative to Copilot, but Continue allows you to use all sorts of different LLMs either online or local ones. This video is specifically focused to get it to work with Codestral. So the first thing you need to do is install Continue inside your Visual Studio Code. For you, it'll show to the right side of the bar, but I've moved it to this section now. Codestral is 22 billion model, so running at full precision would require 44 gigabytes of memory, or at least 44 gigabyte of GPU memory. So to get it working locally, we'll resort to a quantized version. In this case, I'll be using the Q5KM version. I already have downloaded the 5-bit quantized version to my project folder. For the most part of the day, I tried to get LM Studio to work with continue extension in VS Code, but it didn't. To get it to work, I had to create a cadastral API running locally. For that, I used Llama CPP Python library. This library is a binding to allow you Python use Llama CPP. I simply cloned the project and made changes to, to get it to work with cadastral. I have pushed my changes to GitHub. I will include the link to the, this repository in the video description. If continue extension is not already installed, you can install it from within VS Code. After you have installed continue extension, it would, it would ask some question to configure default LLM. It does not really matter because we're going to configure it directly within the config file. So if you go ahead and click configure, it will open the config file. I have included the configuration that I'm using in the repo. So if you go to continue, I've added as a config.json. So first thing we need to do is clone this repository from my GitHub account. So let's do that. I have cloned the repository into a folder called Codestral Server. Next, I'll open the project in VS Code. Next, we will create a Python virtual environment. If you want to use Conda, you can use Conda. I created the virtual environment using Visual Studio Code, but let's do it from the command line as well. Now that we've created Python virtual environment and it is now activated, we can go ahead and install Python packages. So if you open the my project file in Visual Studio Code, you would see that under server, these are the Python packages that we would require. Next, I'll also install a Mistral common Python package. I believe those are the, all the required packages. If not, we'll find out soon. Before I run the server, I just wanted to mention that it is the 4-bit quantized version of Codestral is 16 gigabytes. So you would, you would need at least 16 gigabytes of GPU memory. And if you set the context length to 32K, which is the max for Codestral, it would consume all the GPU memory. So likely you would need to set it a bit less, maybe like 25K. So let's run the server. So it seems we need the shared libraries required for Python to speak to Llama CPP. We have two options. We can either build this project or we could just install the Python package. We'll, I'll do that. I managed to get the server working, but I had to follow some more steps. So I'm going to show those steps. I'll clone the repository again, but this time I'll do it to cadastral server two folder. Next, we need to create Python virtual environment. So we'll do that. So let's activate the Python virtual environment. Next, we need to install the Python packages again. I would also need to install uh, ski build, ski kit build and Mistral common for inference. Next, we need to clone Llama CPP into vendors folder. So let's do that. We'll go to Llama CPP, copy the URL and come back and then do git clone Llama CPP. One thing to note that is important is that we clone Llama CPP inside the vendor folder. I'm saying that because if you go back, there is also another folder called Llama CPP within an underscore. So make sure you put it in the right place and not here. Next, we need to install the project as a Python package, but in edit mode like this. And we need to set the CUDA flag. Uh, for other flags, you can check the make file and you would see like for OpenCL, Metal and everything. So I'm going to install the package. Uh, next, I'll run the server. So it is working now. It is listing on port 4321 uh, on localhost. I have uploaded the instruction how to install the Python packages and do the build uh, to my GitHub repository inside the continue.dat folder info readme. So now the server is running and we so let's check the config file. So it is connecting to localhost. The provider simply just says that it is an OP open AI API format. And that's about it really. Um, yeah, let's try again. Hey. 
Okay, so that's working. Inside the continue.dev folder, I've just added another file to test the fill, fill in the middle, which is this. So let's see if that works. So that seems to be working. If I go back again and delete this, it should suggest me to complete. And it's all coming from local. So that's it for getting it to work. For the rest of the video, I'll go through on what changes I've made to get it to work. So let's look at the sample that was given by Codestral on their model file page, which is this to do a fill in the middle. So essentially you give def.add as a prefix and return some as a suffix, and it's supposed to return the parameters and how to add them as well. I'll run this and see and print out how these are being tokenized. So I've run the above code and it's printed how it is tokenized in text and in index. It is kind of weird how it is being done. Um, so let's go through that. So let's look at the example that was given on the model page. So let's say if our cursor is after the round bracket and it triggers the code completion. Just looking at the code, you would think that the def add would be the prefix and return sum would be the suffix. But it seems that's not the case. What is happening is where my cursor is, that's a token being added for suffix. And then I believe, uh, I don't know what those are. And then return sum, which is this part, or anything after the cursor becomes the suffix. And then they add another token called prefix and then add anything before the cursor. So the way it is done, it would not work. That's why it was not working with LM Studio. The code completion likely would not work with Olama either. I believe the Llama CPP team would need to adjust how they tokenize to get to this to work. Uh, next, let's look at the file that I have added is called run cadastral. So all this does is specify where the model is. Uh, the model settings, the port number. It essentially is simply just using the code for the Llama CCP binding. Llama CCP with PHP binding is a bit fragile. So if you send two requests back to back, it will crash. Llama CPP will crash. So to get around that, I have added a queue. So at most only one request is being served and any new request that comes in will get queued. I know it's like not great, but that's it. that's how I've done for now. The next bit that I've changed is the inside Llama CCP folder server and app. And in here I've modified the create completion method, which gets called for code completion. So here what I'm doing is I'm, I'm picking up the prompt, which gets sent by VS code. Then I'm just removing this token because it's, it's being added by by VS Code. Uh, these are just some debugging uh, print statements. Next, I will write the stop tokens that's being sent by Visual Studio Code. You can adjust them if you need to, like adding new line or double new lines that can be useful. The next step I did was to define the prefix part and the postfix part. And I do that by splitting it on the prefix token. And if there isn't any prefix, we just take the prompt and no postfix. And then we use the fill in the middle request as part of the mistral common package and use that. And we simply tokenize that and then use the text as the prompt. And that's what we pass to the Arma CPP using the PHP bindings. Uh, and that's it really. Um, so that's it for this video. I hope it works for you guys as well. Um, if not, drop a comment. If you found the video useful, feel free to like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching.